Coming up, taking to the desert skies via hot air balloon, we float along with the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. The biggest airplane Cessna has ever made takes its first flight. Check out the longitude. Plus, a famous voice speaks up for an historic factory. And one university uses some pretty advanced technology to teach flying. That and more when AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com. The FBI has become the lead investigating agency in that Piper Seneca crash that occurred near Hartford, Connecticut earlier this week. The NTSB handed the reins over to the FBI after reports that the crash was intentional, reportedly occurring after some sort of struggle between the student pilot and the flight instructor. According to East Hartford Mayor Marsha Leclerc, the CFI told police the crash was deliberate. The CFI, Arian Pravala, was hospitalized in fair condition as we record this, the student, Ferris Freitick, died at the scene in what has been described as a suicide. Freitick holds a single-engine land private pilot certificate with instrument rating and was apparently training for a multi-engine rating. And for an unknown reason, he reportedly crashed the airplane onto an East Hartford street. Freitick is a Jordanian national in the United States on a student visa. And meanwhile, AOPA media relations staff have been working with local and national media this week to remind them about how rare suicide is by airplane. An AOPA Foundation review of NTSB records shows only 31 suicides using airplanes in the tens of millions of flights that occurred in the 20 years between 1995 and 2015. Much of the southeastern United States is drying out after Hurricane Matthew. The storm moved up the East Coast last week. The good news is that we have no major aviation infrastructure damage to report. We've checked with officials and pilots from Florida and up through the Carolinas and nobody had more than minor damage. General aviation is being used for relief efforts and we've heard of pilots going to the Bahamas and Haiti, which was hit hard. Also, the Civil Air Patrol from several states is assisting in the efforts with flooding in North Carolina. And General Aviation, of course, provides access to all corners of the United States, and the network of more than 5,000 General Aviation airports is unequaled anywhere in the world, a network that made the American Futures Project possible. Atlantic Magazine national correspondent James Fallows and his wife have been flying throughout the U.S. to tell the stories of smaller communities that never make it to the national news. I did an item on the Atlantic's website about three years ago saying, tell us the story of your city and why it's worth going to. And we got about a thousand essays back from people saying, here's why the story of Columbus, Mississippi is central to America's story now. Here's where the story of Duluth is, is the representative one. Here's why Chico, California is a place you should see. And we've, you know, we could spend centuries going to see these places, but it wouldn't be possible without the network of small airports that the United States has. AOP President Mark Baker interviewed Fallows in front of the Washington Aero Club last week. Fallows said that American aviation has a bright future, that the urge to fly is irresistible. He also talked about aviation safety. Commercial airline aviation is so remarkably safe that if you spent all your life on an airliner, you would never die. You know, you might want to kill yourself because of the food and the conditions, but you would, you would never, never die because they're, you know, it, it's, the death rate is, is zero in, in many years. General aviation, which is objectively much more dangerous, um, I think that, that private pilots have to, they willingly accept a more dangerous undertaking than many others and therefore are obsessed with accident reports and weather. I think the general public doesn't realize how much, how different this is from driving a car. Driving a car, a lot of the safety is out of your immediate control. Somebody else is drunk, somebody else is texting. In the airplane, I feel as if a lot of the safety variables are in your decision about whether you're gonna make the right. flight. You know, weather mainly, 95% weather, or are you tired, or do you have to get there? And so for our travels in the last three years, where we've done it now about, I guess, 500 hours of flying for these last three years for these travels, our motto has been, we never have to be there. Cessna has flown its new super mid-sized jet for the first time. The Longitude reportedly performed exactly as expected. Cessna announced the jet in 2012. The Longitude can carry up to 12 passengers and features a flat stand-up floor. 
And you can find a lot more about Cessna's newest bird in the November issue of AOPA Pilot Magazine Turban Edition. The digital version is available for your reading enjoyment on your iPad. And if you don't get the Turban Edition, the story will also be available soon through our website. Just click on the News and Media tab and then Publications. AOPA is telling the FAA to get tougher with Santa Monica. Mark Baker is asking the agency to bring a cease and desist order or get a restraining order in federal court to stop Santa Monica from dismantling its airport. The AOPA president fired this letter off to the FAA administrator saying that the, quote, city of Santa Monica must be held accountable as they continue unabated to destroy this vibrant and iconic airport. He applauded the agency for steps it's already taken to put Santa Monica on notice and he reminded the FAA that the city's strangulation policy, quote, does not comport with the intent of the federal grant obligations. Flight training airplanes can tend to be tired and out of date, but not at Western Michigan University's College of Aviation. They use the latest and greatest. AOPA senior features editor Julie Walker has the story. The College of Aviation at Western Michigan University uses advanced technology to train the next generation of commercial pilots. You really want to do the most advanced training anywhere in the world. The College of Aviation at Western Michigan is the place to do it. Western Michigan uses a fleet of Cirrus aircraft with Avidyne R9 avionics for all single engine training. All the technologies that, that is currently or in the future going to be in airliners, we have it today in our aircraft. Students start in Cirrus from the very beginning. It was kind of overwhelming at first, uh, the first couple flights. Uh, there was, there's a lot going on, but you learn really quickly. And once you do, it's, it's so much fun to fly. And I think we're all very well prepared for the future. Western uses advanced simulators as well. We practice so many emergency procedures that we wouldn't necessarily want to practice in the actual airplane. So it definitely prepares us for uh, any kind of situation we're ever put in. The Sims can even simulate a parachute pull. Advanced technology isn't the only draw to Western. What really drew me to Western was the people. I walked into the airport and just instantly felt at home. The staff here and the, just the people you're surrounded with are all so nice and so welcoming and so willing to help each other. Western's formula to train professional pilots seems to be working. Many of the instructors are quickly getting hired by the airlines. Gives you some motivation to get through your training and work hard and really study up uh, because, yeah, jobs are awesome right now. It all boils down to one main goal. My job is to do one thing and one thing only, is prepare the next generation of pilots in the safest, most efficient manner that can be done. In Battle Creek, Michigan, Julie Walker, AOPA Live. You can read more about Western Michigan and many other college aviation programs in the December issue of Flight Training Magazine. Coming up after the break, flying high with no engines. One project hopes to soar to 100,000 feet. And hanging out under a bag of hot air, we visit the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. Meet the pilots who fly with AOPA Insurance. They love flying and saving money, just like you. At AOPA Insurance, we understand how you fly and provide the coverage you need to keep on flying. Call for a free quote and see which AOPA Insurance plan is right for you. Traveling to the edge of space with no engine? That is what Airbus wants to do with the Perlan 2 glider. It just finished a month of testing in Argentina. The glider reached 26,000 feet and flew for five hours. The goal for the project is to explore the stratosphere at altitudes up to 100,000 feet. Perlan 2 will continue testing in the U.S. this winter before heading back to Argentina next summer. As a balloon pilot, I can tell you there is nothing like the experience of a great balloon flight. And there's no better place to see balloons than the yearly Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. AOPA's Dave Tullis was there over the weekend. The Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta is something to see, hear, and experience. The visual display attracts 550 pilots, a million visitors, and more than $175 million into the state's economy, according to organizers. Daily highlights include 
early morning mass ascensions where hundreds of traditional and specially shaped balloons lift off. I caught a ride in the balloon Bud E. Beaver, piloted by Colin Graham of Montana. At sunset, thousands clamor to see the Glodios, where yellow gas flames whooshed into scores of balloon envelopes, illuminating them as stars rose in the desert nearby. It's no wonder why New Mexico is called the Land of Enchantment. This is David Tulis reporting for AOPA Live. You can see more photos from the Fiesta on our website. Airshow performer Patty Wagstaff is helping save the world's oldest aircraft factory. Wagstaff appears in a video about the factory by the National Aviation Heritage Alliance. Wilbur and Orville Wright used the site in the early 1900s to build their airplanes. The organization is raising funds to buy and restore the buildings to use them as a national park. You can find out more information about the project at the URL there on your screen. Nice work, Patty. And finally this week, it's the perfect time of the year to go flying above those beautiful fall leaves. And of course, you're going to want to capture your flight. There are many cameras that will work, but AOPA editor-at-large Dave Hirschman takes a look at a new aviation-friendly action camera, the Garmin Verb Ultra. Pilots love to share their flying adventures, and Garmin has taken square aim at market leader GoPro with its new Verb Ultra, an action camera that shoots in 4K and has some features that pilots will really appreciate. The most noticeable change is how easy the Verb Ultra is to use. It starts and stops recording with the touch of a single button. Menus are easy to use, and the touchscreen works even when the camera is in its waterproof case. It can also be controlled using the Garmin Pilot app or a free Verb app. The Verb Ultra also has an internal GPS, so it can display ground speed, GPS altitude, and Gs in each video. My favorite feature is an internal stabilization system. It smooths out the bumps and keeps the horizon steady even when the airplane is getting knocked around. I recently flew with the Verb Ultra on a mountain flying trip to Colorado and was impressed with its performance and ease of use. It came as close as any camera can at giving a sense of the grandeur of flying in such an awe-inspiring place. And the vibrant colors of the Rocky Mountains in autumn came through beautifully. It never failed to record something I intended to record or took still images when I wanted video, things that seemed to happen with frustrating frequency with other action cameras. The Verb Ultra is an extremely capable, aviation-friendly camera that fits neatly into Garmin's product ecosystem. But breaking GoPro's dominance in the market it invented isn't going to be easy. Dave Hirschman, AOPA Live. Thanks Dave, some beautiful video there. And speaking of beautiful video, we leave you this week with more from the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta from the camera of Dave Toulis. Join us again next Thursday for another AOPA Live This Week.